Paul, upon number four, all debts and encumbrances concerning us and our immediate bloodline, that should be ancestral bloodline, being fully settled, with no possible legitimate claim or objection remaining. So there you go, we're telling them there should be nothing left. We demanded, past tense, upon your fiduciary duties and oath of office that you did annul from the beginning any and all record of events and claims from your records against us and all our ancestral bloodline, including but not limited to our name, flesh, spirit. Okay, what are we saying here? We're not saying now, remove your record. A number of you got responses on that. Well, we can't remove the record. It's public record. We can't do that. It's against our law. Okay. What do they do? What does the Catholic Church do for senior officials that end up having a uh, divorce? Well, under the Catholic Church, you can't divorce. Well, they do, they annul. They annul the marriage as if the marriage never existed. So if the event never existed, then why would it never exist? Because they had no right to register it. They had no right to register it because it's in a higher register and the event doesn't exist, bingo. This argument of, oh, we can't remove a record becomes null and void because the event never happened. You were never supposed to be put in to the role in the first place. So now they have no excuse, none, no excuse whatsoever for not correcting their mistake. Furthermore, Number five, we demanded any and all temporary testamentary trusts, SKV or derivative thereof, formed upon such mistaken entries into the public record, were immediately dissolved, including a full account provided to us within seven days. And notice is given that all acts in commerce or law, we engage a surety of our trust number, da da da, and request all original records previously associated with, associated with your claims are returned to us cancelled and signed as evidence, you have complied with your duties and oath of office. Seven, as we have issued proper notice, given proper notice, you acknowledge that no further demands, debts or actions shall be issued against us and any charges sent to us by mistake will be duly returned to you for immediate discharge in accordance with the law. And you'll see that we only send this to one. I mean, if you can get the design better, please, by all means, that goes, you know, one of these to each of the original four. And there's a witness to the left and to the right in ink and your thumbprint is in blood. Well, I hope you appreciate and uh, I hope you concur with the changes that you see there in immeasurably strengthening this. Now, will they honour? This is a question I always get from people. How will you make them obey? I, I can't make anyone obey. I can't stop the earthquakes that will be coming this year and next year. I can't stop plague. I can't stop storms. I can't stop death. I can't stop anyone doing what they, from their own will, choose to do. If they want to be stupid and destroy their own laws, I can't stop them doing it. I can't. And having an army is not going to change it. Just as we say, when we're in a court full of highly armed, immensely big-sized paramilitary people now that at a moment's notice would just love to to gun down someone that's giving a judge lip. When we say, you know, we do not consent, object, under duress, with all that force, fear, intimidation, they can't make us lie. They can't force us to agree. We have a right of free will. And they cannot make torture lawful. They might try, Bush tried, but you can't make a purse out of a size ear. You, you, the same thing applies when the, when the shoe is on the other foot. It is up to their system to police itself. And if their system doesn't want to police it, if the people at the top don't, don't think the law means anything anymore, then so be it. And that's what the end of the year is all about. The end of the year, when I'm out of the picture, and when it's up to each and every one of you on tonight and up to those that will be listening to be the heroes 
and the competent ones that help your communities and others. It'll be up to you to restore the law. At the end of the year is the day of divine judgment. It's not today. It's at the end of the year. And at the end of the year, there will be the question. Have they dishonored their system? Have they restored the law? Or have they destroyed their claims of law? And at this point, I'm feeling pretty confident the way they're going. Like scorpions on a frog, they cannot help themselves as they cross the stream. They cannot help themselves. They, they say they've changed, but the scorpion keeps coming out. I can't, it's in my nature to be a parasite. It's in my nature to be stupid and arrogant, and I can't help myself. Well, that's ultimately what these people are doing, and ultimately they are the ones who condemn themselves. Now, a huge amount to go through. I've only got to the second one. I'm only going to do one more in this call, and then I'm going to ask uh, for questions. Uh, one, because I'm get tired of talking, and uh, you probably get tired of hearing me, but, but I, I will do one more just to show you the change that's taken place in these notes and then I look forward to your questions, comments and statements and before we get to your questions, comments and statements I just ask please, please just um, if you've got a, a, a long winded thing you want to say uh, all information is important, this comes back from feedback and all opinions is important but this is a forum of Q&A so if you've got something that is a long dissertation use the forum at Eucadia at University you cater info, but tonight please just use the forum as questions, please. So I'm just going to click on the next one, which is the deed of ecclesiastical dishonor. We're going to go through this one, and then I'm going to stop and, and, and ask for your feedback and, and ask for your questions. So the deed of ecclesiastical dishonor. A number of changes. One of the changes is, is recognizing, uh, as we have recognized, why they're so comfortable in dishonouring us? Well, part of it is stupidity and arrogance, but another part of it is a system they put in place well and truly over 100 years ago where they recognise that if they dishonour us, that is effectively a declaration of war. And if we pursue that dishonour, by coming back at them and attacking them, then we have in fact contracted and accepted that we are now accepting we are in a state of war. Now, are there any rules in war? Well, they say there are none. In fact, there are. The Hague Convention, the Lieber Code, defines the law. And when you read that, you suddenly go, oh my goodness, because you see what they're doing. They want us and they want us to be in an adversarial position. Because if we are in an adversarial position and they say that their courts are adversarial, then they have declared war on us. And in a state of war, they can do whatever they like and it's lawful. They love it. But when you are not one man or woman, you are part of a community, then the law of nations apply. And yes, laws of nations, the act of war can... can uh, pursue, but now they must obey, must obey the law of nations and they cannot play the games of uh, trading with the enemy act and the fact that they declared every single man and woman in places like the United States an enemy of the state. So, if you have been dishonoured, the witnesses become your agent the same as the notary becomes your agent so now the deed of dishonor is through the witnesses where you take a, a back seat and it's up to the witnesses then to issue the the deed of dishonor and this is an important change and this way you're not accepting war you're still staying within the boundaries of honor the power of notorial procedure. You don't need to have notaries for notorial procedure. Notorial procedure is the procedure of non-controversy 
in having witnesses. It's an ancient rule, well before notaries were ever invented, that where one has at least two witnesses, independent, not family, that are willing to stand up and testify, you have a stronger cause than if you did have a notary. So whoever has eyes, let them see. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Let it be known to all present and future that we, witness, and the second witness, have hereby given life and personality to the sacred memorial and record of events, entered into the public record through our humble prayer to the divine creator and our solemn testimony as sacred obscenators. Go and look at that word, obscenators, a key word in Latin. It means sealed by, uh, by effectively Holy Spirit, but in Latin it was a seal and sealing of documents before all heaven and earth. First, we did testify in a penalty of perjury before the divine creator and all of heaven and earth that we did witness you, administer your pronouncement, restitutum, and ecclesiastical deed poll in peace and good faith. So you came in peace to the office and officer name below. And second, we did annex you to in full the valid extracts of the above mentioned instruments, associated annexed documents and their associated letter, robotry, obscenation and acceptance as proof of service and due process. Third, upon the expiry of the seventh day since service of the above mentioned instruments and with no indication of performance by you, or lawful excuse for non-response provided. Your name did come and pray. We accept the divine commission solemnly mandated and fully granted by scripture as Levitical judges to uphold the law, protect due process and restore honour. It's at the centre of Mithraism. It is at the centre of their law. Four, as you and your agents have deliberately committed a grave sin against your oath and duties of office, in accordance with all forms of canon law, rule of law, you openly consent and agree freely of your own will that all ecclesiastical derived rights associated with your office are hereby temporarily suspended, pending a written apology and acceptance by you within seven days of all the outstanding obligations and duties first prescribed through the above-mentioned instruments. We don't have to enforce anything. Their laws say they have to step down. Let them break their own laws. Let them destroy themselves. We do not have to enforce anything. Their system has all the enforcement we need. And if it not, doesn't follow it, then let the record reflect that they, they destroy their system. Five as all claimed forms of canon law and rule of law demand you be immediately suspended from duties. Any disregard for the seriousness of this charge by disregarding the forbiddance to enter circumscribed ecclesiastical spaces or perform any duties associated with ecclesiastical office shall be your complete confession that you disavow the existence of any form of divine creator you disavow the existence of all forms of canon law and rule of law and you disavow any rights, powers or authorities of office other than force, fear, ignorance and corruption. In other words, when you send this from the two witnesses and they ignore it, which some will, you have their complete confession, complete confession that they do not believe in the divine, they do not believe in any law or rule of law, and that they do not hold a position by any authority, it's purely as a despot, a tyrant, whoever they are. Well, I'm going to stop there because uh, it's been a, a lot of talking in, uh, in one session, but I hope in what I've shared with you tonight you see that all this is genuine to the effect that no one should feel that you have been on a pointless quest, that you have been run from one rabbit hole to another, Everything you have done and everything you do has a purpose and a very important meaning. You represent the law, not them anymore. You do. And soon I will not be here, so truly will, will be you that represent the law. 
and to represent the law, one not only needs to restore the law, 